Welcome to Tutankhamun and the Golden Age of the Pharaohs. Over 3,000 years ago, ancient Egypt, one of the most powerful empires of all time. During its 18th dynasty, a young boy, just nine years old, ascended the throne. His name was Tutankhamun. King Tutankhamun ruled Egypt for just 10 years until his mysterious death at age 19. His life was but a very short chapter in the story of ancient Egypt. Yet today his name is legendary. Why? Because his tomb, alone among the royal burial places, lay undiscovered for over 3,000 years. Tutankhamun inherited a country in disarray. Enemy empires threatened Egypt's borders. Tut's predecessor, the pharaoh Akhenaten, who may have been his father, created turmoil by replacing Egypt's many gods with only one, the Aten, or Sun Disk. Tutankhamun's plans to restore the traditional beliefs were cut short when he died unexpectedly at 19 years old. How he died is still a mystery. When British archaeologists stumbled upon the final resting place of King Tutankhamun in 1922, it was the first and only time in modern history that the sealed pharaoh's tomb had ever been found. The treasures uncovered in the tomb's four chambers captivated the world. One room almost appeared like a wall of solid gold. There were games for the king to play. And things to help him in the afterlife, including ostrich feather fans to keep him cool. And one even shows the hunt the king led to secure the ostriches. Every item in the tomb displayed the skills of master craftsmen, refining their art to sublime levels the better to serve their king on his journey into the afterlife. King Tutankhamun ruled Egypt for just 10 years, until his mysterious death at age 19. Yet today his name is legendary. Why? Because his tomb, alone among the royal burial places, lay undiscovered for over 3,000 years. In 1922, when it was reopened, Many of its amazing treasures were found intact. This large wooden shield from Tutankhamun's tomb was probably used on ceremonial occasions, since its delicate open-work decoration would offer no protection in battle. Here, Tutankhamun appears as a sphinx, wearing the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. Below the creature's paws, Nubian captives struggle symbolizing Egypt's domination of that land. Fans were essential in Egypt's hot climate. Fan bearers would have accompanied Tutankhamun wherever he went, and the post of chief fan bearer was a prime one at court, partly because he always stood close to the king. This fan, found in Tutankhamun's tomb, once had luxuriant brown and white ostrich feathers all around its arched top. The golden fan plate depicts Tutankhamun hunting ostriches. The king stands in his chariot drawn by two galloping horses. He pulls his bow taut, aiming at an ostrich. This is Ptah, patron god of artisans and protector of Memphis, Egypt's ancient capital. Ptah's skull cap of brilliant blue faience contrasts with his face and body of glowing gilded wood his tight-fitting costume has a delicate pattern of feathers. Ptah is often linked with a falcon funerary deity, and this identification may account for both the feathers and the mummy-form shape. This statuette was one of many ritual figures placed in Tutankhamun's tomb to help ensure the king's welfare in the afterlife. Ptah had an especially important role to play in the funerary ritual. When a body arrived at its tomb, it was set upright and purified with libations. The mummy's mouth was then touched with special implements, 
while spells to restore its senses were recited. This ritual, known as the opening of the mouth, was linked with Ptah, and the ancient Egyptians believed that it helped revitalize the dead. Look for the small ivory box in this case. It was used to play the ancient Egyptian games of Jahal and Senet. You played one of these games on the top of the box, then flipped it over and played the other game on the underside. The drawer contains ten playing pieces and a bone-shaped dice. The hieroglyphic inscriptions list the king's names and praise his power and might. <laughs> Rather off-putting if you're playing against him. Tutankhamun's tomb contained other game boards, some knuckle bones used as dice and gaming chips. The games would accompany him into the afterlife to keep him entertained. The ancient Egyptians believed that anything you put in your tomb would last forever. Artists in ancient Egypt created many works of art that never saw the light of day, like this game board. They were intended for the magical transition from life to afterlife. Inside Tutankhamun's alabaster canopic chest, four deep hollows held the miniature coffins containing the king's inner organs. This head is one of four that acted as lids or stoppers to seal the hollows. During Tutankhamun's funeral, the canopic chest was placed inside a six-foot-high gilded shrine and brought to his tomb in the funeral procession. In these two cases, you see two very similar gilded figures depicting King Tutankhamun. Notice that one of the figures has a flat, angular crown. This represents Tutankhamun as the king of Lower Egypt, the Delta region. The other wears a different, more conical crown. This is Tutankhamun as the king of Upper Egypt, the Nile Valley. In both figures, he holds a flail, emblem of royal power and the curved staff symbolizing the king's role as his people's shepherd. Both of these magnificent works of art are part of the treasury of objects found inside Tutankhamun's tomb. But it's strange that the faces do not look like other images of Tutankhamun. They were probably made for someone else, another ruler. Tutankhamun died suddenly at the age of 19, and his court was no doubt unprepared for his burial. His tomb itself is small, and was probably never intended for a king. But it had to make do, and the various objects placed within the tomb had to be hastily assembled to ensure his well-being in the afterlife. Look closely at the larger of the two masks in this case. At first, we might imagine this gold-leafed mask was simply a decorative item. But in fact, it is a miniature funerary mask made to cover the head of a five-month-old fetus. The golden mask lay in one of two fetus coffins found in Tutankhamun's tomb. Both fetuses were female and were probably the offspring of Tutankhamun and his wife, Ankhzenamun. Tutankhamun married Ankhzenamun around the time he became king, when he was just nine years old. Ankhzenamun was a little older. Like all Egyptian royal marriages, it was no doubt carefully arranged for political and dynastic reasons. Nevertheless, images of the royal couple seem to show a close and loving bond. The shrine's exterior is decorated with scenes depicting Ankhzenamun as a perfect wife and queen to Tutankhamun. She pays homage to her husband, hands him flowers and religious artifacts, participates in ritualized activities, and accompanies him hunting in the marches. In the treasury of Tutankhamun's tomb lay this chest, containing earrings, amulets and pectorals, and two pairs of the royal crook and flail that he would need for adornment in the afterlife. Every aspect of the chest celebrates Tutankhamun as king. For a start, it's made in the shape of a cartouche. This is an oval form with a short bar at its base, which often surrounded the king's name in inscriptions. The shape of the cartouche symbolized the sun's everlasting path around the world. The ancient Egyptians believed that their pharaohs 
reigned over all the earth, not just Egypt. The chest's lid is filled with oversized hieroglyphs against a gold leaf background. They spell out Tutankhamun, ruler of Upper Egyptian Heliopolis. Tutankhamun's name is made of three parts. Tut meaning image, Ankh meaning living, and Amun, the name of the chief deity. So together the name means image of the living God. 150 superb pieces of jewelry, amulets and other precious objects were carefully placed into the mummy wrappings that surrounded Tutankhamun's body. The golden dagger you see here was among them, found stuck into a golden girdle around his hips. The dagger with bands of inlaid colored glass and granulated gold is a masterpiece of the Egyptian goldsmith's art. Its ornate case is covered with an inlaid feather pattern and the head of a desert fox at the tip. Tutankhamun's mummified body rested within no less than seven opulent cases, one placed inside another. The outermost layer, a gilded and inlaid wooden shrine, measured over 16 feet long and 9 feet high. Inside it were three more shrines, then a sarcophagus, carved of golden-colored quartzite. Next came three mummy-shaped coffins, and then, finally, the mummy itself, its face covered by a mask of solid gold.